Good morning, Angela. Happy New Year. Hi, Avonel. Happy New Year, ladies. Thank you for joining me today. Good morning, Glenda. Oh, gotta turn my volume off. I hear myself echoing. <laughs> How's everyone doing today on this fine second day of January in 2019? Since I um, mainly work from home now, I don't have to worry about writing the incorrect date for the next six months because that used to be what I did. Hi, Stephanie and Nancy. Hi, Karen. Happy New Year to all of you. Happy New Year, guys. Really nice to see you all today. Hi, Donna. Hi, Terry. Terry from Connecticut. Thanks for joining. Good morning, Cheryl. Thank you, Avonel. Thank you all for the Happy New Year's wishes. So I just want to do a just a quick reminder... Of course, I don't have it next to me. Where is it? Okay, this is the last day for the uh, holiday catalog. There are some things that are carrying over, but things that are not, they will be gone for good. Sometimes they bring things back on the clearance list. So remember, if there's anything you want out of this catalog, it, today is the last day to buy. I know there are some things that sold out, but just as a quick reminder, I don't want to... I don't want to dwell on last year. <laughs> and then tomorrow starts the occasions catalog and celebration. So if you're new to me, thank you for joining. Or if you're new to Stampin' Up, once a year they have a great sale called Celebration. And anytime you purchase anything that's $50 or more, you get to pick one item out of the Celebration catalog. And um, they did just share with us... There's actually in here, there's a set of uh, framelits that match this T set here. And they are going to carry over into, I believe, the catalog. So you can get them for free now, which is great. So, good morning, Stampin' Peeps. I love that. Hi! Hi, Yvonne. Thanks for joining. Yvonne, that's a beautiful name. Patricia, thank you. Hi, Trudy and Trinity. Wow, some really unique names on here this morning. I like it. Good morning, Cara Jean. <laughs> you missed me? Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. I missed you guys too, believe me. Crafting is way more fun than like holiday overwhelmingness. So I just wanted to show this to you guys since I took a picture and it doesn't really quite show the prettiness of it. This is the card I shared the other day. So what I did with this card was, this is just a piece of DSP. I don't think I can see if I flip the back. It's just a piece of the butterfly DSP, which you can earn in the celebration catalog. Um, what I did was I just took my, um, my different stamp and write markers and I kind of colored like different bits of each one with kind of the same color scheme and then I took my aqua painter and I just blended the colors around I hit it with my heat tool to dry it and then I took my powder pink pad and I kind of just spread it around a little bit just to fill in the background because I thought it looked a little like it needed something and then what I did was I clear embossed the whole sheet and then I sprayed it with some shimmer paint that I put in my spritzer. So in case you missed it too, let me just tell you that the champagne mist and the frost white shimmer paints, they will be carrying over. So that's super cool. And I'm hoping maybe they're going to come out with some other colors. However, the bright copper and the Vegas gold, these are in the holiday catalog. These two colors are retiring and right now they're half price. So they are a pretty good deal. $4 each. Um, these two, the other two, they are still full price since they're going to be carrying over. But all you have to do is put like a drop of these with some alcohol into a, sh um, spritzer, stampin' spritzer, shake it up. And then it, sh it actually, I did it to the background too, which you probably can't really see on there. Yeah, it's kind of hard to pick up with the camera, but man, this shimmer paint is super cool. But what it does is it does make your card curl. So what I usually do is just hit it with the heat tool again to kind of flatten it. And then the other thing, if you really want to flatten it, you can put it in between a piece of paper and run it through your big shot to make it super flat. So, <laughs> celebration. Oh, I like it. She's singing, celebration time. Come on. All right. We have to save that for Stampin' After Dark, which I still haven't figured out logistically yet, but it's going to happen. Um, this is another catalog or card <laughs> that I actually cased out of the celebration catalog. So, this stamp set here is 
called Home to Roost. You can earn this free as well. And honestly, this rooster was really, really easy to fussy cut because it really wasn't that much to it. And he's on like a little dirt mound. So I kind of just hid that behind this piece of uh, paper. And then this is some of this really cool new, it's braided linen trim. And... So when you see this, oh look, I was a good girl. I taped it back. It's really thin, but what you can do is, if you notice this is kind of stretched, what you can do is you just spread it out and it spreads really easily. So you can kind of unbraid it or just pull it apart, but it really does spread nicely. So this is something that's also in the New Occasions catalog. And then I'm gonna share with you, this is one of the cards we're gonna be making at card class on Friday, which is so pretty. I originally actually cased another card from this this is the flowering desert you can actually put the the cacti together but I thought since we're gonna have a bunch of people it'll be a little bit difficult to get that many cactus stamped individually so what I did was I went with the big cactus for the main image and then we're just gonna fill in the other ones and for the background here I use let me show you what it is I used, um, and I have to order another pack of this because it's so fun the happiness blooms designer series paper so there is one, I don't know if I even have any pieces left. There's one that's striped. So that's the one I use. No, I used it all. So I have to get myself some more paper. But this is a really great, um, colorful background, very springy, but it looks really pretty. I thought with this. And then what I did was I did be your own kind of beautiful, which I think is a gorgeous saying with that. I absolutely love that. I actually did that on this card as well. And originally I heat embossed it. But I think because of the color it was in, it didn't turn out very well. I'll show you what it looks like here so you guys can see it. Come on. Vellum is not easy to pick up on a wood table. So you can see it kind of turned out it was not quite as crisp as I wanted it. So that's why I ended up going back and I just did it with um, Lovely Lipstick ink instead. So if you ever have that, but again, you can, you can heat emboss on vellum. It just, um, depending on your words, sometimes they won't turn out as crisp if it's kind of more scripty. And it's not so bad. I just think I wanted it to be a little bit clearer. But you can heat emboss on vellum if you've never done that before. You just have to make sure that you constantly move your heat tool back and forth. That way you don't burn it. So you don't want to don't burn your vellum. That's never a good, good thing. Okay, so what we're going to do today is and again if you don't have a demonstrator love to be your demonstrator all you have to do is send me your full mailing address and i'll mail you a catalog um i know donna told me that she recently got this catalog in the mail so i haven't gotten mine yet but it should be coming i'm assuming in the next day or so so if you are a customer of mine and you've placed an order in the past six months you will get a catalog it should be coming soon if it doesn't come by mid next week i'll say by like We'll go by my birthday, which is next Friday the 11th. So if you don't get it by the 11th, send me an email and then I'll mail you one out on Monday. But um, so anyway, this catalog starts tomorrow along with celebration. But what we're going to do today, I was watching a lot of videos over um, break when I wasn't here. And what I did is I've, I've seen a couple techniques. I'm going to do a different one next week. But I saw a really neat technique, and I'm going to do it on two different pieces of paper because I haven't done it before, so I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like. But I have one piece of thick whisper white, and then I have one piece of watercolor paper. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do two cards. We're just going to do two different pieces of paper to see exactly what it's going to look like. But what we're going to do is we're going to watercolor this paper, and then we're going to heat emboss it with clear, which is going to trap some of the ink. And then we're going to re-wet it to take some of the ink off of it. So I'm hoping it works out well. It's called water, I'm sorry, heat, bleh, watercolor with emboss resist. If that makes sense. But it looked super cool. And this is an idea that I actually got um, watching a video of Jennifer McGuire's, which from, was a couple years ago. But again, this was new to me, so I thought it'd be fun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you... A couple things that maybe you could do it with. So I thought this would be a good one because you could do flowers. If, uh, this is a new stamp set. It's actually a two-step stamp, but you could do these flowers for the background. Um, also, if you want to do something really tropical, you could do palm trees, which would be really cool. You could do something that was kind of more um, abstract if you just did this, like the wheat. And what's the other one I have? You also could do this. This is more of a floral sprig. And then I thought another fun thing would be able to do is if you did it with a background stamp. Hold on, where's this one? This is a new one as well. This is crackle paint, 
which I did a horse card. I'm going to have to, oh, here it is right here. Let me show that with you. Actually, this is one that the Rainbow Stamper created the other day. So this doesn't have the crackle paint. However, he was being a little snarky. He was doing a video and he got a little smart at the end. So I had to stop the video. So sorry about that. Maybe if I'm feeling um, super excited, I'll post it anyway. And you guys can hear he's not sweet all the time. <laughs> but I thought the crackle paint would be cool to do in the background as well for it. A resist however what I think we're gonna go with is one of these because you guys should have most of these stamp sets still that way you can try this too and see if you like it so tropical chic would be great because you have the different plants postscript I thought would be really pretty if you wanted to send something maybe someone who was going on a trip and then I, I might go back with my rooted in nature because I do love this stamp set um, this little flourish here would be great to do an emboss resist with. You could use these from Peaceful Reflection. Kind of any of these make it more abstract. You could do this abstract pattern or you can even do um, the bee or the... These would be a little harder only because they wouldn't trap quite as much. But if you did, maybe the, uh, the shadow image of them. So I think what I'm going to do is I might do a combination of Peaceful Reflection and Tropical Chic. Okay, that way at least if somebody wants to um, do this at home, maybe you can find something to do with it too. So I'm going to pick a couple different colors. And I want to tell you right now, I do have, just to be ready, I have aqua painters full of water. I have some paper towels to reabsorb the ink off of. But you could also, if you have any of these, these are like shop towels that you get from um, the auto store. This one has some embossing paste that I cleaned off. Um, but like shop towels or like old tea towels, these are all really great for doing watercoloring because you can clean your brushes off, you can absorb water, but paper towels are really good for like picking up the water if it's too dark. And the cool part about this too is it's good because you'll get to practice watercoloring, but at the same time, if you don't like it, we can kind of lighten it up and lift some of the ink off. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with picking some colors and I'm going to do two different ones. So for one, I'm going to do Coastal Cabana. Bermuda Bay and pool party. So I'm going to kind of stick with like a, like a color palette ish. So if you figure we're going to have these three, so kind of three shades of like blue green. And then for the other one, I'm going to do like a mixed up palette. So we'll do, let's see, lovely lipstick and mint macaron and and I'll probably do balmy blue. Anybody have any colors you can think of? Come on, help me out here, ladies. I know it's it's New Year's, the day after New Year's. If some of y'all are taking a little quick work break, I completely understand that. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Lisa. Happy New Year. Blushing bride. Sometimes that's a little bit too. You know what we'll do? No, that's not gonna go with the we might have to stick with another blue that we've already used. We'd have to go with Coastal Cabana with that one too. Unless I hear a shout out from somebody else. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the tropical and these three blue greens. And then we're going to do the peaceful reflection. I have mint macaron and lovely lipstick. Yellow. Yellow or lavender? Yeah, that is a good idea. Let's see. Let's see which one looks nicer. That might be good. We'll do some So Saffron. So So Saffron, mint macaron, and lovely lipstick. Okay. So we're going to start, and again, we have two different pieces. So I'm going to do the um, this color. This is on Thick Whisper White. We're going to start with the watercolor paper, okay? So what we're going to do is you're going to take your ink pads and give them a squeeze. And if your ink pads are a little dry, you can also take your... Um, and when, when you have two different ones, let me just show you. Go back for a second. If your ink pad is dry, what you can do is you can just take one of your refills, and you can either wet your pad before you do it or you could just drop a drop into your um, lid so when you have your old style you can squeeze these together pretty good okay so you'll create a little puddle okay of ink these you kind of have to squeeze from the back straight in into the middle and then again these open like a compact so you have your little pool of ink so same thing again just squeeze in the center okay so what we're gonna do let me move this over is I'm going to start with um, my lighter color. Okay, so I just have my aqua painter. You get two of these in a pack. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to this. 
Okay, and I'm just gonna kind of spread. That's a little bit light. I'm gonna add a drop of reanchor. So this was, uh, is that Daffodil Delight? I'll make sure I use the right one. I had these in the wrong spots. Nope. So Saffron. I almost reinked that one with the wrong one. That would not have been good. So So Saffron. I'm gonna put a couple drops in here. There we go. Just reink that. Doesn't really have to be perfect. You can kind of go for like spots of three, like things in a triangle formation. I'm going to close this one up for now. And then here is where your tea towel or your shop towel comes in handy. So you just kind of squeeze your water out a little bit, clean off your brush. Okay. And then I'm going to go into the mint, add a little into that. And you do definitely want to make sure you have color all over because if you don't, it's not going to resist as well. And I'm going to put a little bit of my reinker in this. There you go. That's going to definitely be considerably darker. But it does look really neat because it traps the color underneath. And I don't want to do too much because I want to leave a little spot to put that lipstick in. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for now. Same thing again. Just squeeze water till your brush is clear. And then we're going to go with this. I'm going to leave that there in case I want to add any more. And the beauty of this thing is too is that you can always go back after the fact if you don't really like what you did. You can add more color to it again to kind of cover up. So I'm going to add, I'm going to clean this off and I'm going to add a little bit more mint again just to darken up a couple spots. Okay, just like that. So I'm going to clean these off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to close both these lids just so I don't make a mess. But I'm going to keep these handy because you can always go back if you need to and add some more. I'm just going to take my towel and just kind of dab off a little bit of the ink. And I'm going to set this on the side because what I'm going to do is I'm going to watercolor my other one first. And then I will dry them both at the same time. Okay, so now I have my piece. This is just thick whisper white. So again, I have Bermuda Bay. And my, you know, my favorite, Coastal Cabana. I know I'm excited to see what I'm making too. <laughs> um, no, I am not, Kathy. I'm not squeezing water. What I usually do is I usually. And again, I'm going to start with the lightest. So I'm going to start with pool party. I'll add a little water to the tray here. And then when I paint, I don't squeeze. I just usually kind of dab the color around. But you also have to remember um, from a while ago that there's two different ways to do water coloring. Okay, you can do them dry or wet. So right now we're doing dry water coloring, which means that the paper that we're, we're water coloring onto is dry. So if you wanted to, what you could do is you could wash your whole paper that you're using with water first and it will take the ink actually differently. So that's another idea of what you may want to try with water coloring, which is the great part about water coloring because every time you do something, it's going to be completely different if you're doing dry or if you're starting with a wet paper. And I want to bring, I want to make this just a little bit more intense. So I'm going to take a drop of reinker out of each of these. So this is Bermuda Bay. Put a drop on there. So just as you can see how that just spread because there's water in it, it spreads versus if you do it dry, it will just kind of sit. So you can see when you add just the reinker to this, again, this one was Coastal Cabana. Make sure I have the right one. See how the water spreads when it has more water? So if you take this, it's the same way with watercolor paper. So when you spread it, it looks different, like the water is bleeding out into it. So it's just something to um, kind of take note of when you're doing, because every way you do it, it's going to turn out a little bit different. This is just a little pool party. So you can see, because there wasn't as much water, those are kind of staying concentrated where they were. But once you add water to them, They'll spread out a little bit more. 
And even with having water in these, these lids, when you store your paints, I've never had a problem where they've leaked unless it was like super duper wet. But if this is something that concerns you, all you have to do is just take a paper towel when you're done. And you kind of just sop it up. So again, I'm starting with lightest to darkest. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the Coastal Cabana. But that is still pretty thick considering. So that's not going to hurt you if you left it like that. It's not going to bother anything. And I just want to make sure I'm spreading these around that I get to the edge of everything. This is definitely much darker. Not really any serious kind of pretty random pattern but I just want to make sure that I fill in the color or the white on the paper okay I'm gonna add I'm gonna do one more thing I'm gonna close this so this is the Bermuda Bay I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna close the pool party and I'm gonna just fill this in the rest of the way with a little bit more coastal cabana just to make sure that the paper is covered And kind of depending on how you do it, you know, it, it does look a little bit more brush strokey here. But when we're done, it'll look different. Okay, so I'm not going to pick this up. I'm just going to put all of these on the side. And I'm going to just make sure this is somewhat dry. I'm going to make sure that my brush is clean. So again, I'm just squeezing the tip so the watercolor comes out at the end. And then the brush tip is clean again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit both of these with my heat tool just to make sure they're really dry. That is the one important thing that you have to make sure that these are 100% completely dry or it won't uh, heat and boss correctly. Okay, so going to be loud just for a minute. If it wasn't covered, it's just going to have a lot more white. So what we're trying to do, the goal here is that we have color. We're going to heat and boss on top of it and we want to trap color underneath because we're going to lift the other color off. So that's all. You just don't want white as much white because you're going to remove some of the color at the end. Happy New Year, Peggy! So as you can see, just in general, the watercolor paper, you can see, is still much more straight. And whereas the thick whisper white has definitely bowed a little bit, okay? So that's one thing. However, this will probably turn out much better if you watercolor and walk away, let it dry for a while and come back versus this. So this isn't going to look probably as good as when I'll do one later just to show you the difference between the two, okay? I'm going to make sure, though, that I get the front and the back so it's really dry. And all paper will work differently. So if you get watercolor paper i would not do this on regular whisper white you definitely want to use thick whisper white you could use thick very vanilla um if you have a favorite watercolor paper stampin up also carries watercolor paper probably could even do this on glossy so i'm gonna have to give that a try another time as well but you just want to make sure before you move on to your next step that everything is really really good and dry Okay, so now what we're going to do is, and I'm going to use um, my Stamparatus for this because I want to make sure that when I get ink onto the images that it is really filled in so I don't miss anything. So, where did I put that? So I have my Stamparatus here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these first since these are photopolymer. So we'll just do Peaceful Reflection. I'm going to take one of my pads out. And like I said, hopefully this works because this is my first time doing it. So we'll see how it, how it goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of line these images up. Let's see. I'll spread them around. I know this is like a little dragonfly. Just kind of spread these things in different directions. Could do this for you could do this for Valentine's even if you wanted to and you know most of these are like kind of filling in a different image 
from something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do them half and half. So I'm going to stamp half and then flip it over and do the other half. So I'm just kind of putting all the little images, even though they may or may not actually match what we're doing here. So if you have a really big floral image, it would probably turn out really, really pretty. So I'm just closing this just to pick up the stamps. Oops, well, I thought I was picking up the stamps. And this one I think I might move. Let me see what this looks like. Okay, so most important step ever when you're doing heat embossing, before you do anything, you want to make sure that when you've done anything, especially if something is wet, that you use your embossing buddy. Because if anything is wet on there, this will kind of dry it just extra bit. Also prevents static, especially in the winter when it's really, really dry out. Because you don't want um, static because then you're going to get like a sloppier looking image. Um, another good idea, I have coffee filters. This is what I use for my embossing powder. Makes it kind of easy to dump it back in. As you can see, this is a super duper duper old bottle of Stampin' Up! Crystal Clear Powder. They used to be a lot bigger, so they lasted super duper long. Okay, and then what we're going to do when you do your um, embossing, you want to have Versamark because this is a very sticky ink. Apparently, we found out it's made of glycerin, so it stays stick sticky really, really long. So I'm going to put my magnet over here just in case I do this twice. So I'm just going to press. Okay. It's funny because I know you guys are like, I'm really interested to see how this turns out. And quite honestly, so am I because I watched the video about five times. So I feel like I have it down. <laughs> but it's more fun to do stuff. That way we can do it together. I haven't done it before. And we can kind of see what we did or what we did or didn't like. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one side now. That way I can flip it over. Again, because this is also watercolor paper, that's why I wanted to do it twice because watercolor paper definitely has some deep grooves in it. So I make sure that I got everything filled in. So as you can see there, you can see the kind of what those look like. So if there's anything that you want to change or dust off, it's not as easy to see right this moment. But so you move this over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and heat this half and then we'll flip it around and do the other half. <laughs> I know it is really it's really great okay so I'm gonna go ahead and heat this up again my heat tool is pretty hot because we were just using it I'm gonna make sure that we really fully heat all this in order to trap that ink underneath like it's pretty good I got one little spot here that's not quite as melted okay and just for the sake again of just being cautious I'm just gonna let this sit for a second I'm gonna just rub the other half again with the embossing buddy let me just see if this lines up it should be good so I'm gonna hit this just in case so nothing sticks my grandfather and I we used to play cards a lot so I'm just going to re-ink with Versamark here. And he would always say whenever he picked up extra cards, we would play Rummy and Gin Rummy and everything. And he always said he picked it up for security. So I'm going to say I did that embossing buddy one more time for security. <laughs> just to make sure there's nothing goofy on here. All right. And I'm going to just ink it once more. Like I said, with the watercolor paper, it does have deep grooves. So it doesn't hurt to do it more than once. Just make sure you run your finger over all those images. All right, we're going to do this once again. So I do have my powder. Whoopsie. I have my powder still in here. It's still the clear powder. So you can scoop it if you have like a little scrap of paper. I've seen people scoop it before with like a little triangle scrap. Or you can just redump. I'm going to hope to catch the rest of it. And you can see the difference there. So here's the embossed side. And then that side has not been embossed yet. So I just want to make sure I have everything. Looks like there's a couple pieces overlapping. So I'm not quite sure what it's going to look like. But we'll find out in a minute. So I'm going to do this again. Just heat this side. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that, Mary. Thank you all for that. That's really helpful. All right. So this one is done. 
So that is all heat embossed. Everything is all shiny, except for that one spot. So it's all shiny now you can see. So we're finished with this one. So I'm gonna set this on the side. I'm gonna just put my clear embossing powder back into the container because we're gonna do the same thing with our other card. And you could do this with anything, honestly. It doesn't really have to be clear, but you wouldn't get as much of a um, emboss resist show through. So you could do it with white if you wanted to. It just is going to turn out a little different. So I'm going to go ahead and just flip my Stamparatus around, and I'm going to remove my pad because when you're using photopolymer, you need the pad. Otherwise, you don't need it. And now I'm going to grab my other images here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and kind of figure out where I want to do it. I'm just going to put this here for now. So we're going to lay some of these images down. And I didn't put my stickers on this yet, but I will tell you, I've been using my extra um, stickers from the new stamps. And I've been uh, lining them up. I'm going to add this one in too. So I think I'm going to take, I'm not going to use the flower. So I'm going to skip the hibiscus. So I have the little, like a little dot. I have my leaves. I have this piece here. And they don't have to be on there exact. So I'm going to kind of just put them on there slight. Just like that. All right, so we'll see. Now you do have to press a little extra hard when you use your clear stamps. But anyway, what I was saying is if you have your, um, this is the new sheet from the cling stamp. So once I put my stickers on, I save this. And then what you can do is you can retrofit your old stamps by just trimming little pieces off. You could put a little piece in the center and it'll make them really, really sticky. So if you have extra pieces, make sure you hang on to them for that. And then you can fit all of your other stamps so they work nicely. So once again, embossing buddy. Okay, and I kind of only did it on the half that I did. We'll leave that half away for now. I'm sure I might regret that later. So I'm going to go ahead and ink these with Versamark. And I'm going to do the same thing. Even though this is just thick whisper white, I'm still going to ink them. Whoopsie. Put this on this side. I'm still going to ink them twice. And where's my other one here? Put this over here. See if that's going to work. Well, that's what you get when you get curly paper. I think I missed just the edge here. Let's see what it looks like. I'm going to take this. Oh, uh-oh. Now I'm getting crazy. Ink pads flying everywhere. Okay, let's see. If I can manage to just get just that one little piece in there. There we go. Let's see. Just really want that edge to be held down. There we go. Oh my goodness, I don't even know what's going on here. Something about snorting. I just snort when I laugh, but I'm assuming that's not what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pull this off and set it on the side. And we're going to do the same thing. So I have my, uh, where is it? There it is. I have my clear embossing powder. And we're going to dump this on. Oh, I think this one's going to be my favorite because I really like these colors. And I love this stamp set. If I haven't told you guys before, all these uh, Tropical Chic, it reminds me of the Golden Girls, which is like one of my favorite shows. Okay, so same thing again. Heat tool. And just heat this up. And you can see these from the color we have on here because this is much darker. You can see that the embossing powder is showing up much faster. Okay. I'm going to heat the other side just to try to flatten it a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to just give this a second to cool. So that one little spot where my uh, magnet was didn't emboss, but that's okay. But that is a good idea, ladies, to put tape behind it. Oh my God, if you snort with the straw. I don't even know what is going on on here, but you guys are cracking me up. 
So what I think I might have to do is I may have moved this over just a little bit farther than where I originally started. I'm going to bring this with my heat, my embossing buddy. And let's see if these line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start like this. I'm going to move these over just a little and I'm going to try to leave them because they do have ink on them. I'm going to try to leave them for the most part where I want them. And then I'm going to pick them up from there. That and this one on the end. So I just took out this piece here. Okay, so let's see if I can get this to work. I'm going to bring in another magnet over here. Okay, pick these up again. They're going to have a little bit of uh, residual ink, which is okay. No big deal. First mark. And the cool part about this is, again, it is watercolor, so it will be pretty forgiving when we lift back off of it. Just do these one more time. And the neat thing about this, so if you have your Stamparatus set up and you do this for more than one, you could do a whole bunch of cards because you could kind of let them all dry and then do them all at the same time. So let me move this over. Going to be our final dump of the clear powder. I think this somehow got some glitter mixed in and I don't know who was fooling with this one. All right, let me dump this back in because this will be me famously dumping it all over my entire desk when I'm done. And then what was the point of ordering this big jar of stuff, right? If it's all over your desk. I could have a really shiny desk though. That would be super. Great way to bring in the new year with an extra shiny desk. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way. We're going to heat and pause this last thing. And then we'll start doing our lifting of the watercolor. All right, so call that done and here's what we're gonna see okay so now I'm gonna move this out of the way let me put these two magnets on the back here I'll clean this up afterwards so as you can see with doing a new technique I've completely obliterated my good record of ending at 10 15 so so much for that but oh well <laughs> okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my watercolor brush and again I think I'm gonna use the one that has the bigger uh, tip so what we're gonna do I'm going to start with this one. We're going to see if it works. Everybody cross your fingers. Who knows? So we're going to go ahead and, and drip water on Whoops, to re-wet this. And then we're going to pick up the ink. And this might be better, again, this might be better if you have a bigger brush. Like a big uh, flat brush. That way it kind of wets the whole paper a little bit more. Nope, it's picking up some ink. So you can see some ink is definitely coming off. It just is going to take a little bit more. You just have to re-wet the paper, basically, so you can kind of steal the ink off of it. So this is also a good thing to know, just in case you did something and say you don't really like the way it turned out and you were watercoloring, you can also always go back and lift off your ink, or if you wanted to, you could add more ink to it just by re-wetting it. Watercolor paper and watercoloring in general are very forgiving that way. So we're just gonna tap. As you can see, it's lifting it off so you have color that's trapped underneath, and this one was a crinkle in the paper, but you have color that's trapped underneath of your embossing powder. So it's darker, and then you have these little lighter spots. So you could even do this honestly with just one color because what it's going to do is the variations of it, it's going to pick them up underneath. So what I should have done, which would have been really cool, is just to do half because then you guys could see how dark the one side is. So when I do this piece, I'm going to do half. That way you can see. And then the only other thing you want to do again before you finish, like once you've decided how much you've, you've lifted and you're happy with it, 
you definitely want to heat this to let it dry. So I'm going to hit this just really quickly with the heat tool. Or you could spritz it. That's a good idea, Vicki. Only thing is, all my spritzers right now are full of um, shimmer paint and alcohol. <laughs> but you could spritz it too. That is a really great idea. So I'm just going to heat this one final time just to make sure it's dry. And again, probably with this one where we have the really dark parts, you'll be able to see it more. But you can see like under the lipstick, it definitely has darker spots over here where there's darker, there's darker pieces trapped. But another thing you could do too while you're at it, I'm just going to do this because, you know, it'll be more fun that way. So this is some of that frost white shimmer paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spritz this real quick just to give it like a shine and we'll let this sit on the side. I'm spritzing it from high up. That way it's not quite as concentrated. And then sometimes you do need to re-hit this just to dry it. But now, instead of this just having the um, the shimmer, you also have, or the I should say the embossing paste, it's kind of hard to see, but you also have the shimmer paint on there too. It really is pretty. It's very difficult to see on this camera, I'm not going to lie. But it looks really neat in person. It makes everything look like shimmer paper, which I love. Okay, so for this next one, what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to do half. I'm going to take half of the water off and leave the other half, so hopefully you'll be able to see the difference a little bit better. So I'm going to start on the right. And you can see where it's already kind of... This, again, is a different paper, so it's definitely going to be different. It, this is just Thick Whisper White. So probably it might be a better rule to do this on specifically on watercolor paper might not uh might lift a little bit better on watercolor paper do this one too this one has more water in it there we go but what i'll do is i will also i would like to try one too with doing it one to um now this one's not lifting quite as much because it's off it's saturating the paper so let me try this instead do this. I want to do this so you can see. So I have a lifting spot. So I'm going to saturate it with um, this underneath. Yeah, so definitely the Thick Whisper White, it just, the paper isn't handling it as well. But I bet you this Emboss Resist would have turned out nicer. I'm going to dry this side and see. It's good to know, so don't use Thick Whisper Right. You definitely want to use watercolor paper for this. However, it definitely has a more, just if you look at the two sides of it, it has a more of a watercolor bled look to it. And this trapped underneath is definitely significantly lighter. But you probably just need more work with heating and drying if you're doing it with your, if you're doing it with, with regular Whisper White. Okay, so I'm going to try this. I feel like one of these. Nope, that one definitely has it. Nah, they all have alcohol in them. I was going to say if one of them had water in it, the spritzer idea is really a super idea. But, nah, I don't have any that have the, uh, the right tool in it. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull a little bit from this at a time. So have that really wet. So now I'm going to have to do this one later because I think this will be really, really cool. But obviously just done on different paper. However, you know what? <laughs> yes, I strongly, I very strongly suggest Karen <laughs> doing it with watercolor paper. Thick Whisper White is good for a lot of things. However... Repeatedly wetting it is not one of them. <laughs> oh my gosh, minus eight. Where in the heck are you? Are you at the North Pole helping prep for next year already? That's for a reason. <laughs> no, this will be um, super fun, I think. if you. So it is definitely lighter, but the paper is super duper flimsy. So what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to adhere this one, but I'm not going to throw it away. What I'm going to do, 
This is going to be my motto this year is I'm not going to throw anything away. I'm going to continue working on things until I get them to either be a really good lesson. I'm going to let this dry before I do anything with it as opposed to this one. We're going to mount this one before we go today. So I'm going to let this completely dry. I'm going to set it on the side because it's really like it's sopping wet. You could probably tear this with very minimal effort if you wanted to. I'm going to let this completely dry and I want to take a picture of it later or if I have time I'll see if I can pop and do a video. That way you guys can see exactly what it looks like once it's really really dry. But that's the other thing too. You definitely want to make sure this again this watercolor paper is much thicker. It's much more resilient. You can see it really only has like a minimal bend considering what we did to it. But I think this would be really pretty with the colors to put on to see where is I don't know if that would look look really pretty on navy I was thinking black but I think navy would look really pretty so we're gonna put this on to navy and while we have it out I'm going to show you guys just quickly we'll do something very simple with the heat embossing onto vellum to get that to look nice so I'm gonna go ahead I have a full sheet here and I'm gonna score this a four and a quarter and I'm gonna cut it at five and a half, just like that, okay? And then we're gonna mount this one. You definitely want to, because of all the watercoloring, you wanna make sure that you use a really strong adhesive. So I'm gonna say we're gonna use um, Tombow Liquid Glue because this really, really helps to make sure that it gets super flat. The other thing you can do too is you can run this through your Big Shot in between with a piece of like copy paper, put it in between two of your cutting pads. It'll also help to flatten it out a little bit. So, oh my goodness, listen to me. What is going on here? I have to go back and read these comments, Sidir. <laughs> you guys are crazy, but I love it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on, and we're going to do our, our uh, vellum. So I have a lot of glue on here, which is the good part about the glue. It also kind of gives you the maneuverability if you don't like the way you set it onto your cardstock your base, you can still move it around a little bit. So if you set it on there and you're like, well, I don't really like that, you can still pick it up. You could turn it around. There we go, slide this down. Yeah, this is just a teeny bit off. I'm gonna move it one more time. There we go. It's funny today my son didn't want to go back to school today was their first day back to school so I'm gonna let that sit there for a minute and he said he didn't want to go back to school because he didn't like it and I told him about you know the first time which is going to be next week will be my three-year anniversary as signing up as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I said you know I was a little afraid the first time I joined as a demonstrator and then I started making videos and I was like oh what the heck if I do that let's make videos and if I make videos why don't I might as well write down what I did so everybody can make one too and if I did that I might as well I'm gonna do a uh, lovely lipstick and if I did that I might as well go ahead and see if anybody wants to buy and look here we are three years later and somebody still likes me and even when I make goofy cards Wow, this is like, where is this conversation going? Oh my goodness. Here we are three years later talking about snorting coke, making people disappear hoarding, and me doing Stamping After Dark. See, that's going to have to be a Stamping After Dark conversation, huh? Ladies. <laughs> I love you guys. You are just too much. Nothing like having fun on a random Wednesday with all my friends. So I have a piece of vellum here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it now, which will give me a better likelihood that I'm actually going to line it up correctly. So I'm gonna trim this to, we're gonna just do a half inch. A half inch, you ladies, I'm, I don't know. I think this is just the funniest. know what's going on but it is entertaining that's all I have to say I'm gonna do this so it's gonna be crossways so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure this to five and a quarter and we're gonna lay this across the whole 
thing. Now vellum can be a little bit tricky if you've never used vellum before with sticking it onto your card. So you can do a couple different things. Sometimes people will kind of try to hide it behind like an embellishment. Or you can also, if you happen to have a little Tupperware container and an uh, extra sponge, mine's been sitting for a while, you can see. You can take some um, multi-purpose glue. I can't even just concentrate with whatever this conversation is that's going on. And you can dip your glue onto the back of your vellum. The other thing you could do too is you could use your Sizzix adhesive strips. So you could put that behind it because then the whole thing will be uniformly um, sticky so you shouldn't be able to tell the difference between what's going on. All right, so I'm gonna do, what kind of words do we wanna put on this? Oh my goodness. How about if we just do something simple? We'll do a simple thank you. And while I have you here, I'm going to show you. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you what to do with your stamps if you, you get your new cling stickers. So this is an old er stamp that I never put my sticker onto. So this is just one of the regular old style. So I'm going to go ahead and put my sticker on. All right. So I have my sticker, and these are the ones that didn't stick well, <laughs> they didn't stick if we're being honest, right? So then I'm going to take my cling. This is just the extra. And it doesn't even have to be a big piece. I'm going to just use a little piece. So I'm just snipping out a little piece of the cling. And let's see, am I doing this the right way? Hopefully so. Now that I think about it, I think I should have done it the other direction. See if I can get this off. Oh goodness gracious. I cut all my nails the other day. That always ends up working to my unadvantage. Okay, so now you got your sticky on there again. So all you have to do now is you just pick up and it sticks just as well. And that was a really, really tiny piece that we stuck on there. But now all my stamps can be retrofitted so they'll actually stick to my blocks. So I have a feeling though that this is, of course. This is too, too wide for what I was going to do, so I'm going to have to get out another piece, and we're going to do this a different way. Let's see. I'm just going to measure five and a quarter. Yep, five and a quarter. I'm going to actually make this by an inch, because that should fit. Five and a quarter by an inch. That'll fit on there perfectly. I just, I'm laughing. I don't even know why I'm laughing. I have everybody say, everybody say hoarders instead. How about that? <laughs> hoarders or lunatics or, right, I don't even know what you want to say. I want to say, uh, Rachel, happy birthday, Rachel. <laughs> I'm going to be 43 next week. I still can't even believe that. All right, I'm going to do this with, how about if we do it with silver? Because that'll be pretty. It'll be like a pop of something else instead of doing a color on there. We'll do this with silver. So I went over this with my embossing buddy. All right, I have my Versamark Ooh, and my mini glue dots, which I don't need. I have my Versamark. I ink that up. All right, I'm going to stamp my thank you since I can actually see where it is. You do have to be careful, though, when you stamp in Versamark onto vellum because vellum can be super slippery. So you want to make sure that you stamp exactly where you want it and you lift right off. Otherwise, it can smudge. So we're going to do our thank you. Oh, that looks pretty. Got just a little bit on the edge. If you get any... um embossing powder where you don't want it if you just take a little teeny brush and you just brush it off there you go you can fix any little whoopsies that you made I make a lot of whoopsies so that's how I know I'm gonna dump this back in okay put this on the side and again so just remember when you do have your uh your vellum you can burn it so you want to make sure you move your heat tool back and forth so make sure it's really really hot before you start Make me a birthday card. Well, that would be very nice of you. See, if it's really hot, it goes super quick. Just like that. Really, really fast. Okay? 
So all we're going to do now, this should be nice and flat by now, is we're going to take, we have our glue, put this one here. So it's just some Tombow liquid glue. We're just going to sponge onto the back of this. Might have to have like some sort of a dis disclosure if we're going to do this Stampin' After Dark with the way you guys are going. Which is hilarious. Don't get me wrong. Be like, parental discretion is advised. And then the more you know people are going to come on there and say this that stamping is a gateway to all these other terrible things like hoarding and drugs. <laughs> but look how cool that is. Just like gives another element. Again, you can make your strips smaller. That way you don't cover anything up. But really simple. Your vellum is on there. Really pretty. You could do like some other uh, Versamark. You know what you could do too that would be really pretty? What did I do? I'm just going to do this just because I thought it would be cute. These little, I don't know what they are. If they're little beans or pods or whatever the heck they are. But I'm going to take these. Do, do remember one thing. When you put your blocks on, let me clean this off first. When you put your, um, your stamps on with that new cling, you want to make sure, oh goodness, you know what? I did stick the wrong side. It sticks... See, it sticks to your uh, your block if you don't peel it off quickly enough. So make sure that you do take them off. But I think I also put the wrong side down, so that was probably partially my fault. But take your stamps off. When you have the ones that are fully cling mounted, you want to pull them from the bottom off. That way you don't pull rip your stamp. So I'm going to just take this. These are just those little, little bean things. And I'm going to stamp a couple of these just on here. So once it dries, it'll kind of be just like a little emboss, like a little bit of extra something that you'll be able to see on there. You can see it when it's in the, which is just cool. A little extra dimension to the card. So thank you guys for joining what to and what not to do. See? So do, don't do. Watercolor paper, don't use anything else thus far. I will try it again with the... Uh, with the glossy paper because the glossy paper paper does have that harder back so it might be easier to pick it off up pick it up off of but I definitely want to test it first to see if that is actually the case um I also did do a video about the retrofitting the um the sticky onto your other stamps so that is if you look onto um techniques back on youtube because it does let you categorize stuff on youtube if you look on the techniques it'll say something about cling mount stamps so that will tell you a lot of information about how to retrofit your stamps but since we're doing it i might have to do another updated one as well i hope you guys have enjoyed this as much as i have because i'll tell you after um you know, everybody loves their family, but being with your family for a lot of days in a row, sometimes you need a crafting break, right? <laughs> so next week, we're going to do something really neat too. It's another kind of a similar technique, but it's actually going to use some something that you have in your kitchen that you can help to make your card. So once again, I am going to let this dry and I'm going to see what it looks like after the fact, if it looks like any nicer whatsoever, but I don't know about that. I am going to do this over this technique over again, but onto watercolor paper with these same colors. So this was with uh, pool party, coastal cabana and Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to use that same stamp set because I think it would make a really cool card. Really, really cool. And we need a stamp enough to come out with a stamp that says, thank you for being a friend. Because I would send that to all of you for joining me today because you are very, very amusing. And I truly appreciate all of you. So happy new year. If I don't see you sooner, I will see you back here next Wednesday, again live at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget, if you have something you want to get in the holiday catalog, today's the last day. Celebration starts tomorrow. You can get $175 worth of stuff for just $99 if you sign up as a demo starting tomorrow for Celebration. So really great promotions. Um, if you guys have any questions about joining, if you need a catalog, if you just want to say how crazy I am, I love to hear it all. You can either send me a message here on Facebook. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, you can send me a message on YouTube. Leave me a comment. You can shoot me an email at rachthestamper at gmail.com. Otherwise, I'll get this on the blog later today. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week.